I want to go through sharing. This is probably one of the number one ways that business owners are exposed, not to security incidents as common, but more so to data loss. And so this one's really important to get great because the foundation of sharing and the foundation of data protection inside a Google account or by extension, other online work workflow productivity tools will put you in the right frame of mind for how you should be thinking about data security. And it's, it's quite simple. Some of the big issues that happen very often are around sharing. And typically, many people will just share files straight out of their My Drive. They might create a shared folder sitting in their My Drive. I'm in my Google Drive here. Someone will be here in their My Drive. They create a folder. They share the folder with someone. But the problem with that is that even though I'm the owner of the folder, I may not be the owner of the actual files that sit inside the folder. So if I go for a little bit of a scroll, here in my Gmail account, you can see here that other people, if they've created the files, may own those files. Okay, cool. So what happens if somebody else owns those files? And now even if they're sitting in a folder in my My Drive, if I don't own the files, well, I don't have the right to delete them. The owner of the file is the only person who has the right to delete them. And what often happens is someone will set up a folder here, they'll share it with a VA, contractor, colleague, supplier, someone else, that person creates files for you. They become the owner of those files because they've created them. And that at some point in the future, this is what happens. Everything turns into a complete mess. And once everything's a complete mess, you kind of start to lose tabs on things. And once it's then a complete mess, then something happens. And that person who's outside your business decides, all right, I want to go and clean up my Google Drive because maybe they're running out of their 15 gigabytes of storage. And then they start deleting files and they're like, oh, I haven't worked for Bob for a few years. Yeah, I can just delete all those you know, images, all those branding logos and stuff that I created for Bob. Bang, they delete those files and it disappears from your drive. Most business owners then call us and say, hey, Google's lost my files. <laughs> or you know, someone's hacked my account and, and lost my files. But this is actually usually user error based. Now I include this in here because once you set this up right, you won't have this risk anymore. This happens 10 times more often than accounts getting hacked. That's why it's important to have this one in here. So what's the solution? Well, we use group based permissions and we use another feature of Google called shared drives. Now it's a little bit confusing because you can have a shared folder in your My Drive. That's different to shared drive. It used to be called team drives, which I thought was much smarter, but anyway, Google renamed it to shared drives. Now in a shared drive, the company owns the shared drive. And it's a little bit like a, think of it like a server drive, right? If you've ever worked in corporate or if you've had a server in your business yourself, the business owns and controls the shared drive. So if I set up a shared drive here, I'm gonna set up a fresh one. Right, set up my shared drive. It's gonna open up into my shared drive. I choose which members go into that shared drive. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna add myself here. I'm gonna add some of my colleagues. Cool. Now I've chosen who can get access to that. And I can control what they can do with the data. So if I choose for their role to be a contributor, they can add and edit files, but they can't delete files, very important. So this contributor role and shared drive setup is the way to go with Google. That's the thing that people stuff up the most is responsible for most data loss that happens in small businesses that I've seen. We get inquiries about this nearly every week. And so very important to get this right. So how are we gonna set this up? Well, we're not gonna invite individuals here. We are gonna use group-based permissions. And group-based permissions secure your account and secure the whole of your workflow productivity ecosystem. So let's have a look at setting them up and then let's have a look at how we actually implement them and we use them. So we're gonna use the admin panel. And if you haven't used this before or you, or you don't use it that often, it's admin.google.com if you're on a workspace account. And in here, we're gonna to go to our directory and we're gonna set up some groups. And importantly, we're gonna set up a security group. So I'm gonna create a group here, just call it test. Now. Usually, I recommend you create four groups for your business. If you wanna keep things simple, if you've got less than 20 staff and you're a small business, four groups is plenty. If you're a larger business, you might wanna create a group for each area or department of the business, one for sales, one for marketing, one for delivery, one for executive and managers, one for accounts and finance. 
But if you're a small business, four groups is all you need. Number one is owners, shareholders, director level. Number two, managers and maybe finance. You might set up a second one for finance. Number three is everyone. So that's the whole company. Number four is contractors. Now, I don't have time to set up every single one of them, but I'm gonna set up one just to show you how it works. Helps if I can spell, huh? There we go. Cool, so I'm setting up this group. It gets an email address, but you can choose whether or not that email address is active on the next page. We wanna tick this button here that says this is a security group. So I'm gonna choose restricted group, just gonna lock things down a little bit more for me. Um, and you can see here by default, who can contact group owners. I wanna start switching these settings off. I don't actually want anyone external being able to contact anyone. Who can post to the group? I usually switch that one off and who can view who's in the group. I usually switch that one on. So at least other people in the business can see who's a member of that group. But basically what this is doing is it's saying, right, this group of staff is going to have certain features in the Google groups service. We're not going to use that too much because we're just using it for security permissions. Now, who can join the group? I'm going to say only invited users. So I just lock it down. So only people that I put in the group are going to have access to that. And then allow members outside your organization. Now we're going to leave this switched off for our first three groups. And if we have a contractors group, we will switch that on for the contractors group. But for now, I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to say create group. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to switch that on because I want to, I want to demo the contractor group actually looks like what the contractor experience is like let's go in here where's my access settings and you can you can switch these up at a later time if you need to okay we've created our group now notice the group has an email address it's test blueprint at itgenius.com that's inactive for now but still useful when we're in our shared drive here i'm going to go to manage members i'm going to paste that or you can just type it in if you want cool and then I'm gonna choose the access permission level for that group. Now, if it was the executive group, I'd probably give it manager permission. If it's the managers or the leaders in my business, I would give it the content manager group. If it's a general staff member, and I don't want them to have the ability to delete from this one in particular, then I would maybe choose the contributor access. If it's the contractors group, I definitely wanna choose contributor access. There we go. I'm going to hit share. And anyone that I add to that group now is going to get that permission. So what I would do then is I'm going to remove all of these. So it's just that group. Cool. So let's add some people to the group. I'm going to add Gypsy. I'm going to add Scott. Cool. All right. So I've added a couple of my staff to the group. This is what the experience is going to look like. I'm in my My Drive. I've created a file. Let's find one of these random files here. Ideally something that's not confidential. Ads, there we go, that seems pretty nauseous. All right, so someone creates a file and it is then their responsibility to put it in the team drive. That's how we're gonna share things. So we've got our BB test team drive down the bottom here. We're gonna drag and drop the file into the team drive, otherwise called share drive. And this is the most important thing here, change ownership to shared drive. I'm gonna click move, boom. Shared drive is now the owner of that file. So if you are a contractor. If you are someone outside the business, here's what it looks like. You go to your shared drives and you see all the all the drives that you have access to and check this out. Files owned by IT Genius. Files owned by Hustle Garage. Files owned by Onsite Helper. These are all files and shared drives owned by someone else and that's what your contractors will see when they're outside the business placing files in. Now what this means is you are the owner of those files. You're the owner and controller of those files. And what it then means is that you are the person who is controlling that. No one else can control those files and you are at much less risk of those files disappearing should someone choose to clean up their Google accounts or, which often happens, somebody else's Google account gets compromised because they haven't gone through the security process that I'm about to take you through and they start deleting files or a, or a third party bad actor starts deleting files from a client, from a contractor, from somebody else's Google Drive. And guess what? If you're not the owner, poof, those files disappear. So basically this is called the Google Drive Blueprint, by the way, if you'd like some help sending this up, just let us know. We set up our groups, we set up our shared drives and our shared folders, and you would create one shared folder for each area of the business. And then you put your staff into those security folders. So they only get access to things if they're a member of the group. So the final part of this is to set a 
policy with your staff, a firm policy of sharing inside the business. And what that means is when you've got an individual document open, we have banned the use of the blue button. So you can see the sharing button here is where most people go to share. The only way that you're allowed to share with your colleagues is to go here and click onto the move button and you move your file into the shared drive. But that's how we enforce this across all of our contractors and all of our team. Very important to make sure you do that. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.